Good morning and welcome to the faith community of St. Maria Goretti and Our Lady of the Angels parishes. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday of Lent. Our presider is Brother Jonathan with Deacon Richard. Our gathering hymn is number 650, River of Glory, number 650. Let us join our voices together as we continue our Lenten journey. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. Good morning, brother. As we begin this fifth Sunday of Lent, uh, let us call to mind our sins and ask for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. By your help we beseech you, Lord our God, May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of the love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. 
for I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I formed for myself, that they may announce my praise. The word of the Lord. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongues with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow in tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I've accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ. The righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning, he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now, in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But they continued to ask him. He straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with a woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more the Gospel of the Lord. Uh, today's gospel is pretty straightforward. Uh, the Pharisees, the scribes, bring this woman caught in adultery, it says, to test Jesus, to see if they could bring something uh, against him. See, they're trying to trap him, uh, put him in an impossible situation. Uh, if Jesus says that the law of Moses should be followed, uh, if this woman should be stoned, uh, then he would get in trouble with the Roman authorities. Uh, see, Rome insisted on the right and all the territories that they ruled to be the lone inflictor of capital punishment. So having the woman stoned would, would probably get Jesus arrested, or at least to get him in a lot of trouble. Um, but saying no, uh, going against the law of Moses, um, you know, verbally saying no to the law of Moses, could discredit Jesus as a spiritual authority, uh, especially in the eyes of his followers and other Jews. But Jesus turns it around. He throws it right back at the accusers of this woman. You know, let the one among you with no sin throw the first stone. And because none of them want to get in trouble with with Rome, uh, they show their hypocrisy and, and leave. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the one who was caught in adultery, the woman who was caught in adultery, has no accuser, you know, no one to, to condemn her. Uh, pretty straightforward. But the greater message, the, the deeper meaning of, of this gospel is, is the one that could have condemned the woman, the one that, that did not have sin, that could have thrown a stone. Jesus uh, did not. You know, Jesus did not condemn her because Jesus doesn't condemn. I mean, make no mistake the the accusation, the, the being caught in the very act of adultery was an absolute serious thing. Uh, in the old covenant, it didn't get more serious than that. Um, adultery, idolatry, and murder were like the three big sins um, that, that were absolutely horrible. Uh, there was nothing worse in the Old Covenant to God than, 
than faithlessness. Uh, but Jesus does not condemn her. You know, Jesus does not condemn her because he doesn't. He doesn't condemn. He, he just doesn't do that. He never has and he never will. Uh, Jesus says over and over and over and over, especially in the Gospel of John, you know, I did not come to condemn. I do not condemn. Uh, instead, what he did was he came to, to bring us eternal life. Uh, he came to save us, to bring salvation. I mean, Jesus, more than anything, came to save us. Uh, to save us from what? From death? Yes. Uh, from the devil? Yes. But first and foremost, to save us from ourselves, uh, to save us from sin. Uh, there's nothing clearer in all the gospels that Jesus came to save us from sin, not to condemn, but to save us. Uh, that's why Jesus says to the woman, you know, neither do I condemn you, but go and from now on sin no more. Jesus saves us from sin. So there's a few implications for us that Jesus saved us from, from our sins. He came to save us from our sins. Uh, the first implication is that sin is serious. Uh, sin is deadly serious. I mean, if the eternal word of the Father, the, the Son of God, you know, became one of us, uh, was tortured, beat to the inch of his life, uh, suffered, hung on the cross, died you know, for our sins, certainly to God, sin is, is serious. It's absolutely serious. Uh, we hear in the Mosaic Law you know, that the penalty for adultery was death. Was, was stoning. And we think, you know, that's, that's horrible. That's outrageous. That's, that's barbaric. And it is. I mean, to a certain extent, it certainly is. Uh, we don't actually have any historical evidence that this, this specific law was ever carried out uh, by the Jewish people. Uh, we don't. But that it is in the law is an indication of how serious it is. I mean, adultery, even in our own, you know, enlightened times, uh, destroys lives. Um, it certainly destroys or can destroy the life. It's deadly to one's spouse. It's deadly to one's children. It's destructive to the whole extended family, really to the entire community. It's a horrible sin that, that destroys, that destroys lives. And that's not true just for adultery, but for all serious sin. So that's the first implication of, of Jesus coming to save us from our sins, is that sin is absolutely serious. Uh, the other implication is that as Christians, as followers of Christ, we just can't be okay with sin. We, we, we just can't. Um, and we can't be saved from sin and still be sinning. It just, it, it just doesn't make sense. Like if we think we can just go ahead and in sin, and Jesus saved us from our sins, then we're rejecting the salvation of Christ. I mean, we, I mean of course, we're going to have sin in our lives. Um, we're always going to struggle, but we need to be struggling. We need to be fighting against it. We can't be okay with whatever, whatever sin is in our lives. You know, we can't have some unwritten agreement with God that, that you know, I give you four-fifths of my life, but this, this one area, this one sin that I, that I, I want to hold on to that one. I, I want to just, you're just going to be okay with that one. No, that, that's not how it works. Otherwise, we're rejecting the salvation of Christ. I say this because I'm kind of worried. I'm worried, a little disappointed, but definitely worried. Uh, because this past Wednesday, our parish you know, we participated in the diocesan light is on initiative where we had four priests available to hear confessions uh, with the fifth waiting in the wings, you know, ready to hear confession for, for at least a full two hours, uh, ready to be distributors of Jesus's mercy, Jesus's forgiveness, uh, Jesus's love. And we had 11 people show up uh, for God's mercy. I mean, we were done in like 20 minutes. Uh, we were ready to go and essentially no one showed up, uh, except for those 11 people. 
almost as if to say, you know, at our parish, we don't need God's mercy. You know, at our parish, we don't need God's forgiveness. I mean, yes, maybe I'm, I'm totally off base. Maybe everyone in this church went somewhere else on Wednesday, uh, another parish where the light was on. And if you did, you know, and if you feel like I'm uh, preaching at you, um, I'm sorry. But if you didn't go and you haven't gone in a while, if you haven't gone in a long time and you, and you still don't think you need to go, um, I think I can only see three reasons why you might feel that way, especially during the season of Lent. Uh, reason number one, you don't think you have anything to confess. Uh, you don't think you have any sins. Well, I hate to tell you, but you do. If you really don't think you do, um, then you need, and I really mean this, you need to, to pray more. You need to pray more. Uh, you need to read your Bible more. You need to, to uh, listen to the Pope, listen to the saints, and, and listen less to TV. Listen less to, to the media. Listen less to, to the world. Um, you need to let yourself be formed by, by God in the church and, and less by the world. More by the God in the church and less by the world. Uh, because sin is serious. It's what Jesus came to save us from. But I mean, if you listen to the world, then, then yes, you're going to believe that everything you do is, is, is okay. It's, it's someone else's fault. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just a, a matter of, of a past where people didn't understand things as much as we do today. Um, you can't listen to the world. You can't, everything's not okay. There is sin and it's serious. And if you listen to the world and, and let yourself be formed by the world and not the church, um, you might die and find out you're not saved. It's just as simple as that. Uh, reason number two, at some point in your life, you had just a terrible experience. You had a horrible, awful experience in the sacrament. You know, Jesus does not condemn. He never, ever condemns. Uh, but you had a priest that did. And quite frankly, that priest you know, was not doing his job. Uh, in the sacrament, you didn't have an experience of mercy, love, and forgiveness, but instead of condemnation, of, of shame, or maybe even ridicule. Uh, if that's your experience, I, I am just so sorry that happened to you. Uh, on behalf of the church and, and Catholic priests everywhere, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Jesus does not condemn. But that priest that, that ridiculed you or made you feel small, uh, he probably should be condemned. Um, I'm sorry what happened to you, but you can't let a bad experience rob you of the mercy and grace of the sacrament. I mean, there's true healing. There's, there's true forgiveness found in the sacrament. And it's something that we all desperately need. Uh, reason number three, in your heart of hearts, you know, in your heart of hearts, you don't really believe. You don't believe in the forgiveness of the sacrament. You don't believe in the mercy of God. You don't believe that salvation in Christ is, is healing. Uh, intellectually, you might believe it. You might be able to say to someone else with absolute full conviction that God loves you, that God saves you, that God will, will, will forgive you of anything, you know, absolutely. You might be able to say that, but you don't really believe that it's true for yourself. Uh, for others, yes, but not for you. Uh, you think, you know, you're so bad or, or you, things you've done are, are so terrible that, that you're exempt. You're exempt for God's mercy. I mean, if God, who can really see inside of you, uh, knows you don't deserve his love. You don't deserve his mercy. That redemption is, is you know, just not something for you. Uh, maybe you might feel like the woman as she was caught, you know, full of shame, full of hopelessness. Um, again, that you just don't deserve God's love and mercy. I get it. I, I totally get that. I think um, back when I was a deacon several years ago, I might have mentioned this once before, but I once went 18 years without going to confession. Um, confession scared me to death. I, I knew, I knew of God's mercy, but for whatever reason, I didn't think it applied to me. Um, and one day I was forced to go. 
I, I was on a retreat and, and they didn't give us a choice. They were like, everyone's going to confession. And I was like, no, no, please, no, no, I, I, absolutely not. I mean, I will do anything. I mean, I was scared out of my mind. I did not want to go, but they made me and I went. And something happened in that confessional. It was like a 30,000 pound weight that I did not know I even had fell from my shoulders. I mean, I experienced the love of Christ in a way I'd never experienced it before. Uh, I mean, it became real, absolutely real. I mean, again, I was like that woman and I thought all I was gonna get is condemnation. I thought, you know, the stone was gonna like be thrown right at me and hit me right in between the eyes because that's what I deserved or that's what I felt, well, it is what I deserved, but that's not what happened. Um, instead, you know, I received overwhelming mercy, love and forgiveness and it changed my life. I mean, it, it's still changing my life. Now, I'm not gonna say that every time you go to confession, you're gonna have a felt experience like I did, um, but it's actually what happens. It may not feel like that, but that is actually what happens in confession. You know, Jesus does not condemn. He does not condemn. He saves us. He loves us. He wants to shower us with his love. He wants to, to fill us with mercy. He want, and when we let him, when we seek him out in confession, when we spend time with him in prayer, when we participate and cooperate with the, the grace and the mercy and the love that, he, that he's sending us, uh, we will be changed. We will be set free. So if you haven't already, please go to confession before Len is over. And the next time, the next time you look up at, at Jesus, you know, on a crucifix, look up at Jesus on a crucifix, or receive him later um, in Holy Communion, know that he loves you. He loves you. Know that he wants to give you nothing but, but mercy and grace. And hear him say the words to you, you know, I do not condemn, but go and sin no more. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. Spirit, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. Thank you. As we uh, continue um, on our Lenin journey with, with Jesus, 
uh, in prayer, fasting, and, and doing good. Uh, let us bring our prayers uh, for ourselves and for our world to our Father in heaven. Please respond to our petitions with Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all the members of the church, that we may experience the guidance of the Holy Spirit, leading us to trust that we are being led through death to fullness of life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the scourge of war in Ukraine, and that peace may soon come to that country, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of our country and all world leaders, that they may be blessed with humanitarian concern and a generous response to the refugee crisis caused by the war in Ukraine, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the parishioners of our two parishes, that we may grow together in our bonds as brothers and sisters in Christ and in his mission to our neighborhoods, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and suffering in body, mind, and spirit, especially the homebound and those in nursing homes, that they may experience the healing, peace, and care that they need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, especially for Alethea Clavon, Joan Buckeye, and Tyler Samsonetti, who passed away this week, and for Capuchin Father Phil Fink, whose special intention we remember at this Mass, that they may experience the fullness of Christ's resurrection and life, and for all those families grieving the loss of a loved one, that they may be consoled by the love and mercy of our God, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, hear our prayers and lead us in your, God, lead and guide us in your mercy and love. Um, here, I, 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 and um, we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Please join in singing number 629. You gather in the outcast, number 629.
pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this and memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world 
and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy and the faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
communion hymn is number 499, Only This I Want, number 499.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ and whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. So we do have a couple announcements, so please be seated a moment if I can find them. So any adults who have not received the sacrament of confirmation are encouraged to call the parish office so we can prepare you for that sacrament um, as it will be celebrated by the bishop in our parishes this May. Uh, this week's special Lenin event is the praying of evening prayer during Eucharistic adoration. Uh, this will take place Tuesday at 7 p.m. at St. Maria Gretti St. Joseph Church. Uh, on Holy Thursday, uh, the evening of April 14th after mass, uh, there will be a bus to take uh, folks over to some church visits to visit uh, the different altars of repose in our, our area. Uh, the cost for the bus is $8 and payment is due to secure your seat. Uh, sign up sheets are available in the back of the church. Uh, and we have stations of the cross each Friday after the 11.30 a.m. mass uh, at St. Maria Gretti St. Joseph Church and at 6.30 p.m. at the house chapel here at Our Lady of the Angels, Parish House Chapel. Uh, do we have any visitors who are visiting us for the very first time, have never been here before? If so, please raise your hand so we can recognize you. Where are you uh, ladies from? Where? The South Hills? Our Lady of the Hope. Well, wait, well, welcome to Our Lady of the Angels. Our, Our Lady of the Angels. Thank you for coming. We have any other visitors there for the first time? Oh, oh, I thought you were speaking for everyone. Um, uh, well, where are you? Where are you? Well, we're glad. Well, we're glad you came as well. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Do we have um, any birthdays or anniversaries that would like to be recognized this week? If so, please raise your hand. All right. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O oh Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that what at your prompting they desire they may receive by your generous gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we are sent forth, please join in singing number 132. Lord, who throughout these 40 days, number 132.